Hey, what's up? Daily Warrior Life, latest episode, talking business today, discover and declare. So I had the awesome good fortune to interview Steve Robinson, former chief marketing officer for Chick-fil-A, and talk about his book and his career, Covert Cows and Chick-fil-A, how faith cows and chicken built an iconic brand. And one of the questions I asked was on the podcast, I said, hey, in the fast food industry, in my amateur assessment as a stereotype, you have people, a lot of the frontline workers are people who either it's like their first job, it's an entry level job and they're doing it most likely like in high school, or you have folks maybe who are much, much older who are working their health insurance, social security, you know, whatever, something to do to get out of the house or they need extra money, right? I don't think anybody wakes up and when they're eight and says, man, I wanna flip burgers at let's say a McDonald's the rest of my life. So I said, I would assume the turnover in your industry is high and I would assume the customer service is low and you're getting people who don't really, well, nobody's got a passion. Most people, I would assume, could be totally wrong, aren't gonna have a passion for that industry for flipping burgers or whatever it is. So how do you pull off something like Chick-fil-A where people are really happy who work there? I don't know if you've ever been there, please go. I don't get paid for that. Um, they're really happy. They give excellent customer service. Like I've had people bring the food out to me. Um, I've had people check on us and make sure everything was okay. Um, and they're generally seem like happy to be there. And I said, how'd you do that? And he said, well, first of all, you're absolutely right about our industry. 100% totally accurate. And we set out our internal, like our mission statement. What we are is where good meets gracious, where good meets gracious. And they modeled their training program and they modeled their recruiting program. They went and studied places like Ritz Carlton, Ritz Carlton and Nordstrom's who were legendary for retail customer service. They didn't do what everybody else in the fast food industry did. They specifically wanted to create a different experience. So for example, I, I love his story that he told me on the show and that's in the book of how when he was getting recruited to be CMO, they didn't even have a marketing department at Chick-fil-A back then. And he'd been interviewing for five months and he was running marketing at Six Flags, you know, the theme park. And he interviews for five months. He's finally, he's made multiple meetings with everybody, meetings with Truett, you know, the founder of Chick-fil-A. He's having a meeting with Truett and he's like, Truett, I'm really frustrated. I've been interviewing for five months. Like, am I the guy or not? Uh, am I your CMO? And Truett says, you know what? The rest of the team is, it's up to them. They can determine if you can do the job. I, that's their department, not mine. I want to find out what kind of person you are, what your values are, your beliefs are, your character is, because it's really, really important to me. This is true of Kathy, founder speaking. It's really, really important to me. I think the most important decision we make every day is who we bring into our business. So that's why we're taking five to six months. And that's why I've had multiple meetings with you, not talking marketing at all, but talking, hey, what do you believe in? So I thought that was really, really fascinating. Very important who you bring into your business, who you bring in to work for you, work with you, and who the clients and customers are that you choose to work for, and then the culture that you create. So that's Discover and Declare for today. I am a uh, quarter, third way through the book. It's really good. I highly recommend it. I'm going to ask Mr. Robinson if he'd be so nice as to come back on the show because I had interviewed him and I didn't have the book yet. So I interviewed him just based on, you know, who he was, who he is and what he did. Now that I'm reading the book, I got a whole lot more awesome questions. So I'm hoping he'll come back for episode two. And I said, man, I wish I'd had the book ahead of time. Normally people send us the book and I read them before we interview them. It didn't work out this way with the timing, but I'm hoping he'll come back. That's Discover and Declare for today.